Blog number 20, The Absent Walking Stick. The Absent Walking Stick. This is a title that I came up with, <clears throat> but upon further reflection, I suppose it could have been titled The Amazingly Non-Existent Walking Stick, or even The Stick That Very Nearly Never Was. But I should start at the beginning of my association with the walking stick so that you might have a better understanding or picture of my quest. About five years ago, I found myself at the place physically where a long, six-foot, sturdy stick would be of a great help to me. I found a very nice one from a local woodcarver and was quite happy. Happy, that is, until I fell on it and snapped it in half. I had laid it diagonally across the chair and had sat down on another chair, but when I stood up, I lost my balance and I fell right on the stick. Oh well. I sought out that same woodcarver and ordered a custom stick with my name wood burned onto it. Oh, and I should also mention that it has a small compass on the top, you know, in case I am miraculously ever cured of my taxi and I decide to go for a hike. The sentiment, sentiment is nice, and it is a thoughtful touch, but a bit redundant as I have the food trails that I leave behind. That's blog number 14 without a trace. And all the noise that I make to mark my position for the first response rescue team. The carver was also able to salvage a large portion that I had broken from the original stick. It is about three feet long now, and I th I'm thinking it would work great for a future grandchild. I'm just saying. It was around the, that same time that I found a very unique walking cane at a little shop at the Oregon Beach, which is close to my home and that we often visit. I've used it on several occasions, but it just doesn't give me the stability or confidence of a large stick. In fact, the neurologist I see advised me to use a full-size stick as opposed to a cane because canes encourage you to bend over and it simply falls right over with you whereas a tall stick encourages you to stand up straight and gives more support when you stumble. This all works great, provided you do not get it tangled in your feet while walking and trip yourself. And yes, by you, I mean me. And not only have I been alarmed by my own shadow, but I have wand a wandering foot, and it has on, on occasion wandered, what it would be like if it circumvented the natural one foot in front of the other process and tried going around the outside of the stick. I know it should be wandered, not wandered, but I thought wandered fit better here to describe the foot's logic at this moment. As it did not properly inform anyone else involved in this move, the result was a trip and not a very good one. My dad had a small prune orchard at his house that he had removed, and he made me a walking stick from one of those trees. Prune is a hardwood and makes a nice walking stick. It is a smaller white, white one that you see in the picture below. So, if you are listening to this, you will need to go look, find this blog, and look at the pictures so you can see the sticks. Last fall, I was at the Oregon beach with my family, and we were walking by the edge of the water. I found a stick that was the perfect size for me, so I took it home and I dried it out. A month or two later, my brother-in-law took it home and turned it into a very nice walking stick for me. My wife and I took a trip in January of this year and I deb to Maui, and I debated whether or not I would take a walking stick on the plane with me. Most have suggested that maybe we should just buy one over there and bring it back, which I thought was a great idea because I wanted a third stick, 
and one from Hawaii, Hawaii would also be a memento of the trip. The only problem with that plan, as sound as it may have been, was that we got over there and we couldn't find a stick anywhere. We talked to, to shop owners who always recommended another potential shop or woodcarver just down the street. It started to feel like we were looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I really expected to go over there and find sticks in abundance, but one carver I talked to told me that full-size walking sticks aren't made very much because everything is hand-carved, not turned on a lathe, so it is more time-consuming and isn't just done very much. By the time that I, by the time that I was ready to give the, up the search was when we ran into the to a carver named Lonnie, who had a display table set up at the plantation that we were visiting. I just happened to mention my quest and the negative results, and he replied that he could make me a stick. After talking about the wood he'd use and the height that I wanted, we asked about price. Lonnie answered in a very casual way that he could easily do one for me for between $450 and $600. Well, since that was about 50 cents more than I could pay, I passed. Two days later, we were going through a large outdoor swap meet on the campus of Maui University, which is in the city of Kuhulai, when we saw Lonnie again. He was in one of the booths and had a table full of his carvings. He said that he'd hoped to see us again because he felt bad when I walked away. When he had told his wife that night that it looked like I was unstable and could really use the stick, she told him that he should just have should just go ahead and make me one for the price I was willing to pay. So he said he would do one for me and mail it to the States because at that point we were leaving in two days.